Okay, so in this part of the course, I'm talking about the sampling variance of these beta coefficients that we get from OLS uh, estimator. And we said that uh, the beta coefficients, their variance could be calculated using this formula, which has three components. The first component is the error variance component. The second one is the total sum of squared. And the third one is the R squared. And in this video, I'm going to go over an example in R and I'm going to calculate all these three components manually, although you may not need to calculate these uh, components manually as R output will provide you the standard error of these beta coefficients uh, in it. But I'm going to show you how these uh, components are calculated to give you more intuition behind uh, the calculation of uh, the variance or the standard error of uh, these beta coefficients. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, the variance inflation function and how it is calculated using uh, this formula. I'm going to show you this component and then I'm going to talk about how to calculate the error variance because essentially we do not know about the actual variance of uh, the OLS uh, regression. So we have to estimate it. So using this estimate, we can plug in everything in, in this formula to get uh, the variance of beta coefficient and uh, to get the standard errors of uh, these beta coefficients. Okay, so this is the regression equation that we are estimating and we may be interested in the effect of x1 on y and we may be interested in beta1 coefficient and its variance. The variance of any beta coefficient, that is the variance of any beta j coefficient can be calculated using uh, this formula. And as we saw in the previous video, we do not know this uh, component we do not know error variance so what we instead do is we use uh, the standard errors from the regression model to calculate uh, this actually we do not need to calculate this because the regression output will already provide us these standard errors so these standard errors are standard errors of uh, regression that's the first component the, the r output will already provide us the standard error of regression so we can easily get this from the r output total sum of square of uh, these uh, say x1 variable it can be calculated using this formula which shows us how far away xj is from uh, its mean value if you do not remember what the total sum of squares means you probably need to go back to my video about goodness of fit it explains uh, this sst in more detail using a graphical approach so what we can do is instead of uh, calculating everything by hand, we can use standard deviation formula and get SST from this formula. So what this formula provides us, it provides us X, the same thing. To get SST from this formula, we can multiply this formula by N minus one and we will get uh, this. So essentially, if we multiply this with n minus one, n minus one will be cancelled out, and we will be left with x j minus x bar j, which is exactly what we are looking for. So we can get this uh, using a simple formula rather than using this. And the third component is uh, we can regress our variable of interest on other variables to get uh, variance inflation function of the jth variable, as I described in the previous video. So let's jump in to R and use an example to calculate all these uh, components. Okay, so in this example, I'm gonna use this MEEP single data set, and we are interested in knowing how percent of single households, how they determine the student's math performance. That is how a student's math score, it depends on uh, the single parent households. Okay. So this is the first number that we get. Residual standard error, it is calculated using this formula. So we have our first number from here, 12.48. The second component we need to calculate is we need to calculate standard deviation. And then from that, we have to multiply it by n minus one to get uh, SST or the total sum of uh, squares. I'm trying to calculate the standard deviation of uh, our variable of interest, which is percent of uh, single households and then I'm multiplying it with the n minus 1 the square root of it to get xj minus x bar j I'm getting this SST from here so let's uh, let's get this number which is 176 one seven 
6.56. And since there are no other variables in this model, so our VIF, uh, we can ignore this. So there is no variance inflation function because it's a single model. Okay, so we're gonna get like standard errors of beta j, which is the square root of variance of beta j. And I'm gonna plug in everything in this formula. And uh, from this, I'm gonna get the standard errors of beta j. So we have sigma squared. And uh, from this sigma squared, we have the standard error. That is the square root of uh, this number. So this number, it is calculated from, from this. So we have uh, sigma squared hat, which is 12.48. And uh, from SST, since uh, we are taking the square root of it and uh, we are using standard deviation and we already taken care of uh, the square root of this number. So we don't need to take the square root of this because this is already standard deviation. It's not the variance. So we don't do not need to take the square root of it. So 176.56 and this will give us 0.0. .0 7068 and this number is exactly what is reported here in the R output as the standard error of this beta coefficient. So this is the calculations that uh, are being carried out by R to calculate uh, this standard error. So again the standard error is calculated using sigma squared which is uh, taken from uh, the standard error of the regression output, which is this number, divided by the total sum of squared residuals, which we manipulated uh, from the standard deviation of uh, our variable of interest, which is 176. We divide uh, the standard error from the regression by the total sum of squares, and we get uh, the standard error of uh, our variable of interest and so this is how r is calculating the variance and then taking uh, the square root of it to calculate the standard error of uh, this uh, coefficient in the next video i'm gonna include variance inflation function in this equation and also i'm going to show you how r calculates the variance of beta j in a multiple linear regression model all right see you in the next video bye bye